Hello, I am Sui. Our team would like to present very powerful and into for clinical reasoning called creating concept back for symptoms. Why do I decide to present this? Well, being a medical educator with a special interest in clinical reasoning, I found some mistake we do. Firstly, we teach the individual condition like asthma, myocardial infarct, power obstruction, but budding clinicians, exam by medical students, and newly qualifying doctors struggle with the cognitive process by which the information or presentation contained in the clinical case like shortness of breath, chest pain, and abdominal pain are synthesized, integrated with the knowledge and experience, and used to diagnose and manage the patient problem. So, we have to change our teaching and learning activity to help our junior. But how? The intended learning outcome for our junior doctor here is not to recall a number of facts, but to mobilize and apply those facts or knowledge in a relevant context to solve the new problem. So, the learning activity should aid discussion or encourage way of comparing and contrasting given resources. Instead of teaching the pathophysiology of, let's say, primary neurological disease, we have decided to design a robust learning tool for clinical reasoning. Concept map on how to approach common presenting complaints and encourage them to mobilize, interpret, and efficiently manage the attained knowledge in a clinical context with the purpose of solving clinical problems. By this way, that knowledge of the pathophysiology of primary neurological disease is integrated into a more complex knowledge schema. The center focused clinical reasoning is far more easy than disease focused clinical reasoning. Patients seek medical assessment and treatment with a problem, not a diagnosis. So the starting point to the diagnosis process must be a patient with a symptom, and everything should follow from that. None of the patients come to us with, I'm having a triple A, I'm having a bowel obstruction, so we must start a symptom like abdominal pain to get the correct diagnosis and management. The other mistake we do in our teaching is, when the patient comes with a symptom, we ask our junior to take history, then do proper examination, list the investigation they would like to request, and then develop differential diagnosis. Actually, we are doing the opposite. When the patient approaches to us with a symptom, we generalize the, we generate the list of proposable differential diagnosis first before taking the history and we ask each and every question is to confirm or exclude our differential diagnosis, not to take the Socrates checklist. So the important first step is to develop differential diagnosis for each symptom. We can develop our differential diagnosis according to the surgical filter, according to the pathophysiology or anatomy, or different system. We intend to give hints and tips for you how to approach to the patient with the symptom and we design a series of concept map presentation. Our working team comprised me, Dr. Ling, Dr. Ang, with many other course contributors, including the junior doctors and consultants from Nottingham University Hospital and NHS Trust, teaching fellow at our undergraduate medical education department and senior medical students at University of Nottingham. What are concept map? They are links between concept, integration, and association of almost all possible differential diagnosis to the given symptom. The combination of the visual learning and amalgamation of several inner scripts make concept map a very good learning tool for building intellectual engagement and developing clinical reasoning. The aim of designing these resources are to provide the clinically oriented habits of mind, reduce the personal error in cognition, and provide a platform to ensure that this mental process continue throughout their professional life. This will be helpful for the clinical teacher too. So, I would like to share our first concept map of approach to a patient with shortness of breath in, in this presentation, which is created by my colleague, Dr. Ling. This is not a theoretical, didactic teaching of dyspnea, 
no shortness of breath. So I'm not going through the definition of dyspnea, nor each pathology of condition, which you can easily read from the textbook. But this is a symptom to disease approach of a patient with shortness of breath. So the first step of this approach is, as I have mentioned before, to categorize differential diagnosis. We list cardiac causes of shortness of breath using the anatomy of heart. And we write down respiratory causes of shortness of breath using the pathophysiology of respiratory problem. You can make a list any way you like. Here are the other systematic causes of shortness of breath. Important to consider metabolic causes of shortness of breath in patients of certain comorbidities such as diabetic, chronic kidney disease, and also anemia can present a shortness of breath of exertion, as well as aortic stenosis. With so many possible causes of shortness of breath, the question is, how can we narrow them down? What defining criteria will you use? But different people use differently. Dr. Ling started with the timeline, acute or chronic. Then onset. After that, she used the common symptom that can accompany shortness of breath, such as cough and wheeze primarily, chest pain and fever, etc. Present of fever should make you think about an emphatic picture, exam pneumonia, tuberculosis, COVID, etc. Important to ask about the chest pain to rule out myocardial infarct, pneumothorax, PE, which all may be life threatening depending on severity. Although worth noting that PE can often just present with shortness of breath alone, with tachycardia on the ECG as the only telltale sign. At this point, once you have established the timeline, onset, and associated symptom of your patient's shortness of breath, it is important to clarify the character of your associated symptom. If there is cough, ask whether the cough is protected, as this will further divide your differential. If there is a chest pain, clarify the nature of the pain. Diffuse crescent, myocardia infarct, pleuritic, P, pneumothorax, or angina sounding pain. Presence of a wheeze represents an obstructive pathology. So stop thinking of COPD, asthma, bronchiitis. Here, you can see the different clinical picture of shortness of breath and how they branch out, depending on timeline, onset and associated symptom. Each concept map can be different from each other. And I will show that some example of concept map for the same symptom, shortness of breath, developed by the different students. We intend to create 50 short online presentations are in the process of designing them. But what I would like to highlight here is, I do not recommend you to memorize this concept map. Instead, we hope that through this concept map, you will learn the process of diagnosis reasoning. Understanding the diagnosis thought process is useful for all those who wish to learn the art of clinical diagnosis. The ability to critically examine a list of differential, rank them according to likelihood, and pick up what does not fit is very important. Using this example, read some symptom of diagnosis book to create your own one. 
Thank you very much for listening. And this project has been presented at Association for Simulated Practice in Healthcare, National Virtual SP Conference in UK in November 2020, and also published in BMJ. Next week, we will upload the video which Dr. Ling represented as our team as SP Conference, creating constant math online symptom to diagnosis teaching. Here is a summary of our concept of shortness of breath. And thank you again.